In this video we'll discuss the dispatcher uh, position and the screens available to control the layout in the other room. Straight ahead we have on the right and center the two screens that actually control all of the signals and all of the turnouts and detect all the sensors and transponders on the layout in the other room. To the left we have another display which includes a status display which gives a, a real-time status of what, what all is going on in the train room. So hopefully that will help the dispatcher confirm that his uh, directions are being carried out and so forth. We are now showing the two screens that the dispatcher uses to control the layout in the other room. Uh, traffic flows on the from the track in the upper left of the upper, upper uh, half of the left screen to the upper half in the right screen down to the lower uh, left in the left screen and the lower right in the right screen. Um, now what we want to do is zoom in and show you some of the details uh, of the controls uh, and specifically we'll uh, show how we can uh, manage some of the track work in the other room. For this part of the demonstration we're going to show you how we can control the alternate path through Girardville right about in the center of the screen. Basically from LT37 which is number 8 on the on the pattern on the line pattern uh, through LT38 which is the uh, um, number 6 number 10 on the uh, on the screen. Now what you, you notice is that at currently we have a, a yellow uh, basically uh, entering uh, the uh, the path near near the uh, um, main main but there's, there's yellow because as you can see there's a there's a, a red line right in the middle of the main line in Girardville so basically that that red that leads into that is preceded by the yellow facing us what we're going to do is we're going to flip that turnout uh, to take the alternate path there and then on the opposite end that uh, on LT38 uh, we will uh, throw that to uh, to diverged and bring that one as you can see right now you have the, the train that's on the main line in Girardville has a green to go uh, east toward uh, Big Mine Run and Ashland uh, we're going to basically uh, change that to map what we uh, want to do is allow the train to come through now there are some sp speed up tools that we'll show you later uh, that warrant um, longer than uh, individual switch settings but for now we'll just show you individual switch and, and signal settings uh, right now you'll notice that the uh, on LT37 the upper part of that uh, uh, set of controlled knobs and so forth controls the uh, turnout and it's right now in the diverging uh, position which you can see clearly at point 8 on the screen uh, below that is a, the signal uh, control uh, which in CTC mode allows me to override uh, uh, some of the bi-directional flow that's normally allowed in, in ABS on a clear track uh, and we'll show you that too uh, let's let's set, move to the next phase then you'll notice also that uh, uh, that the uh, switch number LT38 location 10 on the pattern on the track pattern uh, is in the normal position so we're going to turn it into diverging and we're also going to in both cases LT37 and LT38 we're going to move the, the flow of the signals to only allow eastbound traffic through there so anybody coming from the west who would normally in an ABS situation get a green light to go east to west we're going to disallow if one was there right now there isn't anyone but you can see there is a train parked on the the, uh, uh, the siding in Ashland okay so I'm going to uh, get my mouse over here and we're going to take a look here at the uh, LT37 uh, as you see it's diverging we're going to turn that into the normal state uh, you have a little sound effects built in also you notice that even though I switched it there it didn't move the track yet and that's because of the normal code operation of the code button right down here the white button at the bottom you notice that the red uh, warning is indicating that there is a pending change but it hasn't been implemented yet 
by the dispatcher. Now, I'm also going to uh, uh, basically change the signal uh, up there as well to be eastbound. Okay, so that that will basically uh, allow this red uh, to become green so we can jump across here. But it will disallow what would normally an ABS turn this also into green to come back the other way. Similarly down here at 8 at 38, we're going to set this up uh, to be diverging so we can come out and go through that siding, that track. And we're going to also set the signals uh, to be uh, bound uh, to be a uh, leaning uh, eastbound and so at the next step okay now you see that it's not green it's yellow and the reason that it's yellow is that we have not yet uh, uh, diverted this turnout so it's a red here so cascades back to a yellow here so now we'll implement this one okay and now you see we have green, so the track train, if there were a train right here, in fact there's one right here, could proceed through here uh, all the way over to Big Mine Run and actually he has a green uh, uh, to get past both this turnout and this turnout onto this track right here. But you'll also notice that even though it's green here, it's actually red this way. So if there were a train one to come this way, he would be stopped there as well as here first. First if you stop here because uh, in an ABS type system this would be a green as well as this being a green but in a direct uh, dispatcher control signal system this will turn red. Now of course we've done some, some simplification of the overall signaling systems that we implemented for our layout or to make it easier to manage keep the costs down and let people be able to learn as well easily. So more of that later. But as you can see now, the dispatcher has done this. Now, he would probably, of course, also be talking to any train that might be approaching. Perhaps this train out here in Ashland would want to have the signal to be able to enter the main line here and be able to use the train through here, say, to go to Frackville or Pottsville. Okay. Looking quickly at the status screen, you can see that, of course, uh, the, uh, the the trains are unable to go through that alternate path through Gerarville as well and the signals are corresponding to the uh, signals that we uh, saw at the dispatcher panel itself and that's what we should see in the other room which is where we're going to go visit and sh see the track work make sure those turnouts actually flipped and the signals actually corrected here we are in the train room I just walked over and there's screen if we zoom in lo and behold the signals in, in this room also are playing the correct status. Let's take a look at the actual tracks now. Okay, here's the first signal, LT37, uh, that we set, and you can see that indeed it is in the normal position to lead into this track. Okay, and of course, there's the occupying train in the other track, and there is the signal in diverging mode that we set to get back out. So that allows the free access through this track. Uh, now, what about the signals themselves? Well, if we look here, if we look here, we see uh, the lower head is set to green. That corresponds to the green we just said. The upper one, of course, is still red. You can't go that way. If we look over here at the entry, that we just set. Here we see in the signal straight ahead that the lower signal is green which means we do have permission to take uh, the uh, normal route uh, from Rackville into Gerarville not the main line one which is red. Similarly if we look at the uh, trains in the opposite direction leaving Gerarville to Rackville they're both red which is correct they should be both red. Finally we can see that the signals leading into Gerarville in the opposite direction are both red as the dispatcher has set the flow of traffic from west to east and disallowed east to west flow. Finally we also see that the flow into Ashland uh, uh, is, is green through the back-to-back -back switches there. Let's suppose that the uh, dispatcher wants to stop all trains from flow flowing into or out of uh, the Ashland-Shimokan link. Looking straight ahead, we're in 
we see that uh, in this ABS mode, which is indicated on the screen two places. One is that the, there's a yellow line under number 14, for example, at the edge of the screen. Uh, there's no arrowhead under, unlike where we had uh, change the flow and force the flow. You'll notice that there's a on six, on ten, uh, and also on um, eight, there's an arrowhead facing toward the east as we set the direction. That is to say, the dispatcher set the direction to the east. Here it's an ABS mode, so a train can enter from either direction from uh, Shimokan into Ashland Mainline or from Ashland Mainline into Shimokan. There's nothing there at the moment. It's also indicated by the toggle switch, which is down at the bottom of the screen. <clears throat> Here. Well, lower part of the screen. And if we flip this, we we'll set it to that mode. And then if we implement the code button, as you see, the arrow head is facing both ways. And there's now a red signal both leaving Ashland for Shimokan and from Shimokan coming into Ashland at the far right of the screen.